Today we're going to be looking at the aviation fuel operation. We'll follow the product right from the delivery right to the aircraft wing. We'll look at the different products, Avgas and Jet A1, and all the important quality checks that must be carried out before the actual product is offloaded into the storage. To confirm, we have on specification fuel all the time, every time, which means clear and bright, no water or sediment, and within specification limits. Here we have the road bridger at the depot, which would have been standing for five minutes to let the product settle. The vehicle will have been earthed, and during that time, the documentation from the refinery certificate to the release certificate would have been checked. The staff will be checking that the product number matches the vehicle number on the paperwork, and lastly, that the seal numbers from the trucks matches the seal numbers on the documentation. Here we can see the seal being removed from the delivery pots and the different compartments. You can actually have multiple compartments on the same vehicle, so it's very important that these are checked to ensure that you are offloading the product that was ordered. Here we can see the driver taking the sample checks from the different compartments. It is very important that the fuel is checked for quality before it is offloaded into the storage. The bonding cable is always connected between the bucket and the vehicle to stop any static electricity or sparks. Quality checks of the jet fuel should be completed. So here we can see the water capsule checks, which must be carried out at each refill and refuel. Five millilitres of fuel will be passed through the syringe and into the capsule. Agitating the fuel encourages it to pass into the syringe. Once the capsule has five millilitres of fuel, the capsule can be removed and checked. If it is clear and there is no water present, we will not see any green or blue speckles within the capsule. Here we have conductivity checks. The conductivity meter will have its own probe number with a result that will need to be recorded. It is very important that the density of the product is checked. This applies to all types of fuel. The temperature is tetan and the density is corrected at 15 degrees C. It is very important that the hydrometers and thermometers used are controlled and checked on a regular basis. Here we have a cross reference from the density at 15 degrees C. This is checked against the refinery and release certificate data to make sure they are well within tolerance. Refinery lab report will include the product type, the specification of the product and the specification limits. Also included on the laboratory report will be the batch number and the tank that the fuel was taken from at the refinery. Last but not least, the driver will have the release certificate to show the specification limits when the product was loaded at the refinery and these will be checked at the location to make sure they're within limits. A retention sample is kept for all batches which are kept for either seven days or until the batch is changed. This is to ensure traceability in the event of any accident or incident. Once the product has been checked and is all within limits and specification then the product can be offloaded into the storage. The Jet A1 storage facility is very much like the Avgas, with similar gauges that must be monitored on a regular basis. We have the filter vessel and filter change data and also the addition numbers. We also have the millipore point where the colorimetric test is done and finally the hose end strainer point which is the final filter before the fuel enters the aircraft fuel tanks. Emergency stop buttons should be checked on a quarterly basis. On the side of the tanks, you can see the correct signage with clear text of the inspection dates. Road bridges can be offloaded with what we call DCD or driver controlled deliveries. But in this case, the depot staff are present to complete all the quality checks. Compartment controls must be closed off before the product compartment is changed over, making sure the hoses are connected securely and the caps are reinstalled. The driver and depot staff must be wearing the correct PPE at all times. This must include safety glasses, anti-static clothing, safety boots, and this must include ankle protection, and last but not least, safety gloves. Once the product has been offloaded, the checks must be completed on the vehicle itself and also the paperwork. The driver will reinstall the caps to stop any contamination within the hoses. Once all the caps have been secured, the hoses will be loaded back correctly and safely onto the truck. 
Finally, all paperwork must be checked and signed off. As we've mentioned before, documentation and service records are very important. All forms should be fully completed as these forms and documents are legal documentation. The road bridge driver will also conduct their own vehicle safety checks before moving off. They will walk all the way around the vehicle, checking all compartments are secure and safety equipment is still in place. Each vehicle will have the correct safety signage for the product being carried and all emergency contact numbers and product details are clearly visible in case of any accidents or incidents occurring. The vehicle should be in good roadworthy condition so the driver will also be checking tyres for wear and damage, lights and general condition of the vehicle.